Thanks for joining me in my quick little tutorial on rub-ons. One of my favorite mediums to use is rub-ons. I think that you can use them in so many different ways. You can use them in mixed media, you can use them in canvas art, you can use them in scrapbooking, paper arts, um, and, but one of my favorite ways to use them is in jewelry. Um, so today I'm going to give you a quick little tutorial on one of my favorite things to do with rub-ons in jewelry and that is to put it in between layers of resin. And if you're not familiar with rub-ons, it is a two-part system. It has the front portion, which is um, which has the actual image that's going to be transferred onto your project, and it's got it's got the back protective um, sheet. Okay, and so if I was going to go ahead and pick something from this, I would just cut it out and then put the rest of my sheet back into my. So bin. I've already decided that I'm going to be using this notebook image somewhere. And I've also decided that I want to add a little butterfly to my face there. And so I took the backing off just so I can kind of get an idea how it's going to look. So the first thing that you're going to do once you've decided what rub-ons you're going to use, once you've decided um, which image you're going to use, and once you've put the sealer onto the image, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to add a layer of resin. And the reason I do that is because it adds height and to the so rub-ons. Today I'm using Amazing Clear Cast. Um, it's a two-part, so you're going to use two equal parts, and then you're going to mix them together for about two minutes. Um, before you pour it, you're going to want to wait an additional two minutes um, to get rid of the bubbles that are in there. And so I've already poured some into this bezel, and now I'm going to let that cure for about eight hours. Okay. Um, if you happen to have some bubbles left in your bezel and, you know, they're just not coming up, normally what I do is I'll take my heat gun and I'll just zap it, and that normally gets rid of any bubbles that I have left in there, okay? So it's been about six hours since that second layer of resin cured, and it. Uh, I went to go test out my second rub-on, and I made a boo-boo. I accidentally laid it on there. Um, I was just testing it out, but it was still a little tacky, and it actually left some of the rub-on onto um, onto the bezel and I didn't you know it's it's tacky so I didn't really want to scrape it off because I was nervous that that was going to leave more um, damage that would do more damage than than I want so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that and then I'm gonna end up just covering that area anyway um, but that's why it's a really good idea to make sure that you let the resin completely cure um, if you're doing in between layers, it's not that big of a deal if you do get um, some fingerprints on it or something like that because when you add the final layer of resin, it's going to clean all of that up. But if this was your final layer of resin, you want to let it cure a good 24 hours. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead, even though it's not completely cured, I'm going to go ahead and add my second rub on. And I took the backing off, and normally to apply it, you just need a popsicle stick or a um, or a stylus. I like to use a stylus. I'm just trying to plan out where I'm going to put that. I'm using a stylus today. And I'm just rubbing it right on there. Okay, and because it is still a little sticky.
you just want to be careful with lifting that up. And so I got some of the rub on over the bezel there and I'm just going to use my nail and take that off. Okay, and now I'm going to add, mix up two equal parts of resin and add my final coat. Um, when I let this final coat cure, I'm going to actually cover this pendant in a, um, in like, in a, a little plastic container so that there's no dust that gathers onto the resin while it's curing. Mm -hmm.